Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another BK Reacts video. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing the New York Giants' recent hires uh, at the coordinated positions. Yes, I know, guys, I am a little bit late on this, and I do apologize. I uh, I haven't really had much motivation this week to record, and I, I should be better, y'all, so... <clears throat> Dang. I should be better, y'all, so I do apologize for that. Anyways, I'm here now, better late than never, as the common phrase is. Um, we're going to be talking about the two new coordinator hires, so... Uh, offensive coordinator, we ended up hiring Mike Kafka, uh, Chiefs QB coach, worked very closely with Patrick Mahomes, and we also hired former Ravens defensive coordinator Don Wink Martindale, obviously Wink Martindale was the very famous game show host uh, in the 70s, but I don't know where he got that nickname from, I guess it was just given to him, I, I don't know. Um, anyways, so we're going to start it off with the offensive coordinator hire, which was Mike Kafka. Um, as a really big Patrick Mahomes fan, I, I'm very pleased with this hire because Mike Kafka was the QB coach for the Kansas City Chiefs. He worked very closely with Patrick Mahomes and some could argue that he very much helped Patrick Mahomes become the player he is today. Because if you really think about it, coming out of Texas Tech back in the 2017 draft, Patrick Mahomes was raw, man. He was he had a high ceiling, but he also had a really low floor. He could be a bust or he could be a generational talent like he is now. And obviously, getting drafted by the Chiefs, going into an offensive powerhouse in the Kansas City Chiefs and with an offensive mastermind in Andy Reid was very helpful for him. However, Mike Kafka was the one who, because the thing with Mahomes was that he did struggle a bit with accuracy. And yeah, that's that was the main thing, his accuracy. And his mechanics were a bit weird too. Um, Mike Kafka helped fix that. And now look at Mahomes. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Now, am I saying that Mike Kafka could do the same thing to Daniel Jones? Probably not. I mean, if you look, they are two completely different players. You got Patrick Mahomes, who obviously has a ton of arm strength. Daniel Jones, his arm strength is one of his weaknesses. You got Patrick Mahomes, who... I think he's a bit more smart running the ball. I think they both have, they both are insanely skilled at running the ball, but Mahomes has a bit more IQ, I guess, running the ball, and he also is less injury prone. Daniel Jones has had a lot of injuries uh, over his three year career. I believe he has missed, I need to think about this, he has missed 10 games. Due to injury, not counting the, the two that he obviously missed back in 2019 because Eli was starting the first two weeks. Um, but yeah, so two, the both of them, two of them, completely different players. Um, however, I do believe that, you know, Mike Kafka can at least improve Daniel Jones. However... It is very, it's looking a bit more up in the air with the, the quarterback's situation because if you saw Malik Willis, he absolutely balled out at the Senior Bowl. Um, really, really increased his draft stock, so you never know. Um, the Giants could get him at seven. I don't think that will happen. I don't want that to happen. I don't think it would make sense, but it's definitely a possibility. Giants could always trade up and... Uh, or they could always trade back, I guess, and get that, uh, and, you know, get the mid-round selection, take Malik Willis. They could always trade up from the second round to get him. You really never know. I mean, really, it's, 
I, th I want Jones to be the starter because this is his final year in New York. And I really just don't see the point. You know, if, if, if Shane is going to be rebuilding, like he said he probably would, I don't get trying to get a quarterback and developing him when you can wait another year to do that. You could have Jones as kind of the bridge quarterback, or you could keep him next year and use him as a, like a backup. Um, unless the, if the Giants do really well this year and Jones has like a 31 touchdown, 4,300 yard season, then obviously we'll keep him. But that's probably not happening. I don't see Daniel Jones as a franchise quarterback. Uh, but Mike Kafka, you know, sources like very close. I believe Andy Reid. Andy Reid said that he was, you know, a pleasure to work with. And I think that th that was a great hire. All right, I'm going to move on. So the New York Giants also hired defense, former Ravens defensive coordinator Wink Martindale. Now, this, in my opinion, was one of the best hires in all of the, the 2022 offseason coaching slash coordinator hires. I do believe that. The Ravens defense has been one of the best uh, over the past four years. I mean, you look at the Ravens defense under Wink Martindale, 2018, 2019, 2020, they were third, second, and third. Yes, 2021, it was a little bit of a decline. You can blame that on, you know, letting someone like Marcus Peters go. You can blame that on Marlon Humphrey regressing. Um, but yeah, they were third, second, and third, 2018, 2019, 2020 in points allowed. And in my opinion, that is something that the New York Giants did a lot of. They let up a lot of points, especially at the end of the, the second half. Last two minutes of the second half, we were outscored, I believe, 75 to nothing. That is so bad, man. And... What I also really do like is that he's going to utilize more blitzes. I am, I was, look, as much as I think that Patrick Ram was probably our, the best option, you know, to keep him, because I didn't know we were even, it was even a possibility that we could hire Wink Martindale. Um, the New York Giants were always super passive. We were never aggressive. It was always a soft zone with Patrick Ram. With, and I absolutely hated that. I could not stand it. You have a rookie pass rusher in Aziz Ojolari who has a ton of potential. You saw in the first three games, he had like three and a half sacks, a forced fumble, and I believe he also had three sacks in the game against the Panthers. I mean, that guy has a ton of potential. And you also have Leonard Williams, who you're signing three-year, $63 million contract. To do what? Bring four people Every single time, I mean, you look at Wink Martindale, I believe he was first all three years, like 2018, 2019, 2020 in blitz rate. And then he was sixth last year. So expect a lot of blitzing, which is what I love. I love it when the New York Giants blitz because I do believe we have a good enough pass rush where we can get to the QB. Yeah, sure. Part of, like, about half of it is weak. You have, I mean, Dexter Lawrence is more of a run stopper. He's not really someone who's going to bull rush like that. Um, Lorenzo Carter, O'Shane Zimenez. I mean, Lorenzo Carter occasionally has that one amazing game, and then it'll just disappear. Zimenez is terrible. Um, but, yeah, like, Giants, they're looking at, you know, drafting uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, you know, possibly Aiden Hutchins. I don't think Aiden Hutchinson is going to be there. But they're looking at Kayvon Thibodeau. They're looking at Aiden Hutchinson. They're looking at George Carflitis. I don't know how to pronounce that name. Um, I don't, I personally don't want an edge. Um, but I do believe that under the right coordinator, under the right coordinator, our defense could be very good. And I do believe that Wink Martindale is that coordinator. Um, anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I do apologize for the lack of uploads. Uh, there will be an NBA trades video coming out either tonight or tomorrow. Uh, aside from that, enjoy the rest of your night and peace.